All right, well, as usual, I forgot to film this from the beginning, so we'll go reverse order, but what I got here is, here's the truck that I was mentioning in my other videos. I finally got it uh, yesterday. Um, the one with the clutch issue, gonna need a clutch, they say. Turns out that's not the case, but we'll go into that in a different video. Um, first things first, though, this thing um, did not have keys. So they had lost the keys, so the key, uh, the ignition lock needed to be replaced. So um, there's your old ignition lock right there. They just slide out once you get down this deep into the steering wheel. So here's the new one, obviously right there. I've got that in place. Um, it doesn't have the pin in it yet, so you can literally just take and pull this thing straight out if you need to. Like slide it on out, it just slides in goes into a key there so first things first when we're going back in same way as going out this is the pin threaded pin that needs to um, that holds it in place so that pin goes down in this hole and lines up with the tumbler there's a slot right down there in the bottom of the tumbler that that pin ends up going through so sometimes it takes a little bit of finagling to get just the right place to slide that in there. Working on it here. Right there. There we go. Start it back up. She runs a little rough. Missing. Mm. Yeah, that's another project for another day. So now that we got that down in there, got that started, we're gonna take our eight millimeter wrench here, socket wrench, and just get down in there and I'm just gonna thread that thing in. snug you don't have to crank it down um, it just sits down in there kind of hard to see it at the moment but there it is so it sits in there it threads into some plastic probably on the other side so always a good idea to take it a little easier on those this is your turn signal switch that pin right there is hot. Be careful about that. That's your horn switch. So we just fit this back down in here gently, like so. That sits in there. And there are three screws. One down here, one up there, and one that sits underneath this switch. And I'll show you that in a second as I get these guys back in there. Um, start with these screws here. They're a coarse, coarse threaded kind of screw. Like I said, most of the stuff kind of in here is probably one shape of plastic or another, so maybe some metal inserts, uh, hard to say. So these go in there, hold this whole switch block in place down in here. There's enough slack in the wiring for that switch that you can pull it out to get behind it to get that lock pin out of there. Now for this one up here, we gotta push that down, turn on our blinker, get that one in place right there.
there are those. Next up, we've got this little guy here. And this is an arm that hooks up to your blinker lever. Notice it just, it's just a flopping right now. So this goes in here, and I might have to put the camera down because I need two screws, but it hooks up here. It puts in right there in that slot. It locks down there, and it hooks into the arm right there, like that. So yeah, it's gonna keep popping out on me. So I'll tighten this up a bit here. Then I'll get it to hold that wiper, that blinker arm up. Get it to start. Put some pressure on that little lever there. There it goes. It's going to feed itself right in there. I'll use my knee here. Huh. There we go. So, now we can see blinkers are working. Don't know if headlights work. Ooh, look at that, high and low is good. That's all set. Now we're moving along. So, next, got this spring drops on the column. On top of that, we got this. This is your horn contact. It, there's a, a ring on the back side of that, brass ring. Makes contact with your horn right there. And this is the wire that goes up and grounds out when your horn makes contact. Obviously that turns with your steering wheel the whole time. So it goes on top of that spring. And then on top of all of that goes your plate. This plate right here holds everything in place. And this is indexed. There is a wide spot in the teeth. You can see them right there. There's a big gap. And on here, there's that wide ridge right there. Oops, right there. Yeah. Right there so there's a bunch of these little teeth down here so we need to get that wide gap there right there that's where that goes now this is all held in place by a round ring snap ring if you will slides all the way down and it goes into a groove here so I'm gonna set up one special tool. You need a couple special tools to do this. And the one is cheap part. You can get these at most your parts store. This is a compressor, steering wheel, lock spring compressor. Mounts on, threads onto the hub, and it shoves that spring down so you can get your lock ring in place. So I'm gonna set that up and come right back here. Okay, so here we are. We have the compressor mounted in here. This shaft threads on to the end of your steering spindle, and this part just spins in here on the end of this, so you can crank this and it'll thread in. Uh, once you get that threaded on, then your wing nut here tightens down the outer part, and it compresses this down, and you wanna compress it down until you can see that lock groove right there where this ring goes. And then you use a screwdriver or two and you shove the ring all the way down onto that spot, which I'm gonna need two hands for, so I can, I'm not gonna be able to record that part. That's the essence of putting that ring back in place. 
Okay, so you get your two screwdrivers around that, uh, one on each side or so, you start working it around, and then once it slides over those grooves, you can slide it all the way down to there. Now it's gonna hold this plate. I'm gonna back this wing nut off. It's gonna hold this locking plate down on that spring that's underneath it. Once that's loose, just spin this, unthread the whole unit. Voila. Now we're ready. Our steering wheel's gonna go back on. Make sure that that lines up right there. That spot where your horn wire is gonna go down through. You want that there. Find the splines, line it up. That's on. Next is your nut. I'm gonna put that down on there. I'll have to go grab my torque wrench. We're gonna torque that down and then we'll put the rest of it together. Okay, so I looked up the torque specs on the steering wheel. It's 29 foot pounds. Um, not worth it for me to go out in this torrential downpour we're having and get my torque wrench because that's not a whole lot of torque. So I just tightened it up by hand. Um, it's blind, it's not going anywhere next. We've got this wire right here. It's got a little little tab on it. It's got a female spade on the one end. That slides down in here. Down in here. And these things are fragile. There's a slot there. It's hard to see, but there's a slot that that tab goes in. And there's a spring on it, like you see. So you stick that tab in and turn it a quarter turn, and it holds it. That's, just, that's all there is to it. You just... Push it in, turn it a quarter turn, hold it in place. That is your horn button wire, if you will. This is your insert. And then it's your horn switch, uh, which is this plate that goes on top. There's the terminal that the horn wire connects to. This clips on place. And there are two screws right there. They come in from the back side of this down here, right here, right here. There are two uh, little uh, seven millimeter, I believe it is, seven millimeter screws that come in from the back side to hold this horn button in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook up this wire and then stick that button on. Okay, well, there it is. Horn button's installed. Hmm. Well, kinda has a hair trigger. Or it doesn't work sometimes. You can hear it clicking, yeah. This thing has some issues, obviously it's extremely dirty. Um, it's been sitting for a long time. It's got mold growing, it's, uh, it's a mess. Uh, but that'll come, we'll, we'll get it all cleaned up. And I've already got somebody who said they want it for general junk hauling and boat hauling and just stuff around town. So um, 192,000 on that 4.3 liter V6 that's in front of it. So. Yeah, interesting combo. Somebody, I think, ordered it this way because it's got nothing. You know, it's got vinyl floors, a four-speed with overdrive behind a V6, but it has the tape deck option with the graphic equalizer. Ooh, pretty fancy for 1990. Um, so, yeah, I think this thing was an order truck because I'm pretty sure, you know, they no dealer would have probably bought V6 1500 4x4 long box extended cab. Ooh with, you know, vinyl floors and a stick. It just seems like a really weird option. So, anyways, uh, we'll see what happens here. I'll get it, uh, I'll shoot some more videos of fixing the clutch issues that it's got, and, uh, you know, after it gets all cleaned up and shined up and looks pretty, or as pretty as it can be, um, 
I'll get some shots of that too.